The title of my study is Second Malignancies in Mycosis Fungoides. In this study, we uh, used two methods. First, we looked at a cohort of patients at the University of Minnesota, 172 patients with mycosis fungoides seen between 2005 and 2017. And second, we looked at a cohort of patients in the population-based SEER database from the NCI, where we had 6,742 patients. We found of the patients at the University of Minnesota cohort, of the 172 patients, 24 developed a second malignancy. This was compared to a control population of patients with seborrheic dermatitis, three of whom developed a second malignancy. We found that patients with tumor stage disease and with advanced stage disease, meaning stages 2B or higher, were at increased risk of developing a second malignancy. In the SEER cohort, we were able to more accurately calculate risks of individual malignancies. We found that patients were overall 10 times more likely to develop a second hematologic or solid malignancy overall. In terms of risk of solid malignancies, patients were seven times more likely, and for hematologic malignancies, they were 47 times more likely. We found that patients have an increased risk of developing a second malignancy during the first six months after diagnosis and between years 12 and 15 after diagnosis, although there is a statistically significant increase along the entire time period. And we found that patients aged 30 to 50 are at dramatically increased risk of developing a second malignancy, although patients across the age spectrum were at increased risk. The most common second malignancies that we saw were lung and bronchus, non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, nodal and extranodal, melanoma, colon and rectal cancer, female breast, and prostate cancer. Um, and the reason we think patients are experiencing increased risk of cancers is we believe that this may be due to immune suppression secondary to the mycosis fungoides, although further studies need to be performed to really determine if that's accurate.